Hello and welcome to YMT220 Economics. So we are still discussing chapter 5 and we were speaking about uh, elasticity and its applications. So in, chapter, in part 1 of this chapter we spoke about the concept of elasticity and we defined it as the uh, percentage uh, in percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price because we were speaking about the elasticity of the demand and we spoke about different cases uh, ranging from the uh, extreme let's say inelastic to extreme elastic and somewhere in between unity elasticity we spoke about a lot of details in that part we are uh, continuing the same topic uh, however, we will discuss different aspects. The first one we will discuss in this part is the income elasticity. So we were speaking about the price elasticity of demand. And as I said, we defined it as the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the price of that uh, qu uh, good. So in this case, we will change the price by the income and we will see it's actually the percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in the income of an individual or family or household. So this is exactly the idea of income elasticity and we can categorize uh, elastic or inelastic based on certain uh, goods or services. So this is the equation. It's just the measure of the uh, response. Uh, of the demand of certain good or service based on the change in the income uh, of a person or individual or household. So now uh, we have two types of uh, goods. We spoke about them in, in the previous chapter. We, spoke, we, sa we said that we have normal goods and uh, inferior goods and uh, these are uh, having actually different types of um, attitude or you can say uh, preference when it comes to the uh, income. Now think about normal goods. Normal goods are uh, constituting the most of um, uh, cons uh, consumed products that we have or uh, goods that we have or services that we have in our life. Think about food, think about clothing, think about schooling. All of these usually are normal goods that people consume on daily basis or they have to pay for them on daily basis and usually our life is dependent on them. Um, now think about necessities. Now necessities as a normal good, one category of the goods, normal goods that we consume in our life. Think about, as I said, food that we cannot give up on daily basis. Uh, think about clothing. It's, there are so many others that we have as necessities. Uh, these necessities, well, they are, um, they, or you can say they have a positive income elasticity. The more income you have, the more consumption we will uh, get usually, or we will uh, have in our own attitude towards normal goods. So that's why they are elastic, but with a positive uh, tendency towards the change in um, income. So. If the income goes high, you will have higher elasticity uh, in terms of consuming more of these goods. If the income goes low, you will have also like uh, some sort of el elasticity of spending less uh, on these goods. But I have to uh, remind you of one thing. Necessities, them, uh, sorry, good, uh, normal goods are, themselves have, as I said, two types. We, I mentioned to this. I, I mentioned this. I think uh, last last lecture. I, I I provided last video. I provided uh, necessities and luxuries. Necessities, things that we usually cannot give up. Uh, I I give an example of food. We cannot give up food. You can give it up to a limit, but you cannot totally give it up. But you can give up luxuries like going on a vacation. Or, for example, um, maybe buying diamond or maybe gold for just uh, ornament or whatever. So in that case, uh, you can give up luxury. It's more actually elastic than necessities. Necessities them themselves do not show that much of elasticity based on the change of income. However, luxuries 
show higher elasticity is based on the income. The, the more income you have, the more luxury, luxurious things you will have in your life. The less income you have, the less luxurious things you will have in your life. And the opposite goes for necessities. And this is the idea of uh, income elasticity based on goods. Think about the second type of goods, inferior goods, not normal goods. Inferior goods, we explain about them once. If you remember, we said, for example, taking a bus ride, just going in public transportation, taking a bus ride. Uh, and this is affected by the income, the sort of income you have. The higher income you have, the less inferior goods you consume. And this is exactly what we say. It has a negative income elasticity. Exactly goes similar to the normal goods, but in another, sorry, in the opposite direction. So they have certain elasticity, but based on a negative view or negative um, movement. The more income you have, the less you consume from them. They are somehow elastic, but it depends on the income that you have. The less income you have, the more you consume from them. Okay. Cross price elasticity, elasticity of the of demand. This is another type of uh, elasticity, and we here we discuss the change. In the quantity demanded of one good, let's say we refer to it by good A, based on the price change of another good, let's say good B or second good, good one, good two, or for example, good A, good B. So we have two products or two services. Uh, we check the quantity demanded of one of them based on the change in the price. So Sorry, I, I, let me fix my statement. The percentage change in the quantity demanded of one of them we divide it on the percentage change in the price of the second one, and we see the relationship, and that's why we call it uh, cross price elasticity. Okay, so this is the equation I was mentioning about. One of them, the change of one of them, divided by the price change of the second. So we speak about percentages, even if I forget to say it, we speak about percentages. So we, you remember how we calculate those, and we said we use the midpoint to calculate the change, the percentage change in the quantity, and also we use the midpoint to calculate the percentage change in the uh, price of a good or service. So what do we get from this cross uh, price elasticity? We uh, can measure the attitude or the behavior, uh, let's say, of the demand in some product based on the incre increment or decrement of the price of another product or good or service. It, we, we, it could be applied also to services, not necessarily on the goods or products only. So uh, if you remember also, we spoke in last chapter about two types of uh, goods that we have uh, some, uh, you can say unique relationships with some goods we said we have sub, uh, uh, substitutes and complements. So imagine substitutes. Think about, I always give this example, and it is uh, actually accurate up to certain limit. I say tea and coffee. You may think about maybe uh, other, other things that they substitute one another. Um, so these uh, goods usually have positive cross price elasticity. What does it mean? If a change in price of, uh, let's say, tea, the, the price of tea goes high, what happens? The elasticity, actually, or the, you can say the cross price elasticity of coffee most likely will also uh, take the same uh, positive attitude. Why? Because it follows the increment of the price of tea. Okay, this is usual. Complements. Uh, sorry, this is um, not it follows. Actually, people tend to consume more from it, so to use it more. Now for complements, when we have two goods that they complement one another, if an increment in price of one of them, um, then most likely we will have uh, a negative, actually not positive. Why? Because people tend to consume more or less when the price goes high. Now think about milk and coffee. Milk and co coffee usually are, are complements and a lot of people desire to have like uh, milk with their coffee. So if we think of an increment in the price of coffee, what happens? What will happen to milk? Or an increment in the price of milk? Uh, what will happen 
to coffee. So we will have a negative cross price elasticity because uh, an increment in one of the goods, if they are complements, will make the price, of course, uh, will make the uh, consumption or the demand of the, se uh, the, the second or the, the, the complementing uh, good less. It will decrease the demand of the complement. And that's why we have a negative cross price elasticity in this case. Uh, we will speak, as I said, about the second part, uh, in, sorry, in the second part about the supply. So now up to here, now we spoke about um, topics related to demand, demand, demand. Now we will speak about supply. So for supply, the same idea is applied. What we have is uh, quantity, the percentage uh, change in the quantity demanded. So divided by the percentage change of the uh, quantity sorry, I said demanded, supplied, divided by the price, the percentage change of the price of the quantity supplied. So this is exactly how we sense the uh, responsiveness of the quantity supplied of a good or service to the change of the price. So the same what we apply to demand, just change it to supply and apply the same thing. We are speaking about price in this case because we speak about price elasticity, not any other thing at the moment, okay? So we just calculate the percentages, change in quantity supplied, divided by the percentage change in the price, and then we get to see whether the uh, kind, this kind of supply is flexible or not, which means it is elastic or not, or what kind of degree of elasticity the supply has, okay? Now, the way we do it is exactly the way we did for demand. We use the midpoint. The midpoint, we have a point for the quantity and for the price, uh, first one, and we have another one for the quantity and the price. So we have the initial and the final, or the starting and the ending. And then we subtract based like the ending minus the uh, starting divided by the midpoint, the average, you can say. And then we divide, this is the percentage, we need to multiply it by 100 for, for sure. You can drop that uh, percentage because it's multiplied by 100 here and multiplied by 100 here, they will cancel each other. So we'll divide it by the percentage change uh, in the price or of the price of the supplied quantity. And then we will get some certain uh, value. And this value will be determining actually where your elasticity is. Take this simple example, assume that we have this kind of um, scenario. Let's say we have the price of uh, RAM, some type of RAM, let's say DDR, changed over some certain period, and the quantity demand also changed. Now look at the price per gigabyte, that means one gigabyte, uh, gigabyte sorry, is equivalent to $8. If you are buying, let's say, uh, 16, it would be by certain value, you can multiply it and see. Uh, it changed over some period to four. That means it lowered by uh, half. It became half price. Okay. So the quantity demanded for sure, since the price went up, uh, went, uh, sorry, down, then what will happen? The quantity demanded will be higher. That's for sure. Uh, there are other factors, especially for computing uh, things that like you can say the, the uh, anything related to computer, especially in terms of memory, uh, the consumption of it is going growing uh, rapidly high day by day because of the deployment of technology, as you know. So now what we are looking for is what's the price elasticity of supply. So now what we we are looking for is to calculate the uh, elasticity of the supply here or the price of the supply um, we can apply the midpoint so we have the quantity here we we have the end the start we subtract them we sum them up divide them by two to get their mid, midpoint and we do the same to the uh, price we subtract the end minus the beginning and cancel any negative sign. We will speak about it later on why it is. And then divide by also the midpoint. And you will come up with certain value or certain number and that will tell you what kind of elasticity it is. This one is high. It is higher than one. That means it's elastic. 
So the price elasticity of supply is elastic. So while suppliers still can manipulate or can actually uh, produce and uh, lower or change their price based on the uh, supplied quantity, okay? So, and this has negative tendency. Why negative tendency? Because the more actually um, drop in the price in this kind of RAM or this kind of memory will get, will, will get us uh, more of the demand in the direction of uh, actually request of this product. You may say, but this is again is the uh, law of um, supply because a decrement in the price makes suppliers not willing to uh, supply more. It's true. That's why we say it's negative. It has a negative effect on the on this case. However, uh, what will happen is exactly uh, the quantity supplied will likely to cover the difference in cost based on other things. Maybe also the technology of production lowers the cost and so on. We will not go to that side. We are just discussing the elasticity. We will not discuss those now. Okay, so the as I said earlier, we may categorize, actually not earlier, last uh, part, the last video. We may, we may categorize two main uh, types. The first one is the, um, the quantity supplied that responds substantially to the change in price. And that's elastic. So it goes, the change in the quantity supplied change rapidly or substantially with the change in the price. Okay, similar to this, similar to this example. This is elastic, why? Because the change in the price made a substantial change in the quantity demanded. But in which direction? This is exactly what we are speaking, still elastic. It has, it has a negative tendency. Well, we are not discussing this now. Inelastic is the other way around. When the quantity supplied responds only slightly, so we have a tangible, slight, not tangible, slight change in the uh, quantity supplied when the change in the price or when there is a change in the price or when there is a percentage change of price. This is what we call inelastic. Now you may think about what kind of products that we may have uh, elastic or inelastic supply. It goes also back to the demand. It's very similar to the demand. The goods that usually people cannot give them up and their uh, production is not very tough. Well, they are usually in elastic and uh, you can think about, think about their uh, supply uh, that doesn't actually respond or the quantity supply doesn't much respond to the change in their price. Uh, if you compare them to uh, other goods or services, that usually people are not that much interested in and they have replacement for, then these are usually uh, elastic and they can be um, substituted or there will be like certain supply for them based on their own uh, quantity demanded. How about the determinant of the price elasticity? Time period, very similar to the price elasticity of this. This is supply, so we, we spoke in previous in the previous uh, video about the price elasticity of demand, and we said the time period uh, makes the supply more elastic, and makes the demand more elastic. For this one, it's exactly the same. The price elasticity of supply goes actually more elastic by time. Why? As we explained in the previous video, we said like in the short run, what happens? Usually people do not give up buying things, and for this reason, the supply will continue. But after some time, people will adapt either by finding a replacement or substitute or maybe adapting their life without having to consume uh, a lot of certain good or service based on its price. And for this reason, also the supply will be adapted based on that sort of scenario. So for the short term or for the short run, usually we have uh, less elastic for the uh, long run, we have more elastic scenario. Uh, well, we have also um, like uh, different other types when we speak about uh, 
you can say a type of products or services themselves now think about i think about this well let's say let's say sorry let's say the beachfront properties uh, this kind of uh, property or this kind of um, uh, places are limited worldwide we cannot change their existence so we cannot actually create more of them so they are somehow inelastic okay but think about the production of cars well uh, companies can build factories raw materials can be uh, brought from different parts of the world so it can be imported if not available i mean domestically then the production of cars can be possible but you cannot create i mean beachfront so this is uh, somehow also uh, one factor or determinant okay of the elasticity well you, you may think about as i said uh, also in terms of the long run and short run uh, adapting also factories to produce more cars is hard in the short run in short time but it is easier in longer time or long run so this is also this also affects the elasticity depends on the long run and the short run okay what kind of attitudes or behavior do we have with the elasticity of the supply very similar to the demand uh, if we have unit elasticity that means the elasticity of the uh, supply or the price of the supply is equal to one then we have unit elasticity Th that means the change is linear here not linear actually the change gets us one each time we have a different a difference in the price or change or offset in the price the offset in the quantity uh, is equal to it so we have some sort of unity elasticity if supply is elastic if it is greater than one similar to our example here okay it doesn't matter negative or positive it doesn't matter that's just the tendency okay but if it is less than one that's inelastic okay so inelastic means people tend not to lower the supply of such goods or services even if their prices went high or low but if the supply is elastic if it is higher than one the an increment in the price uh, you can say stimulates a huge increment in the uh, quantity demanded depending on where we are close to one or too much higher than one and the other way around the opposite way with an elastic an increment in the price will not change the quantity supply too much so if decrement or increase or fall in the price will not change the supply of the product or the good or the service much uh, well, we have the perfectly inelastic. We spoke about it in the demand, but this is for the supply. Perfectly, uh, supply is perfectly inelastic when the elasticity is zero. That's a vertical uh, curve. It's just uh, parallel to the y-axis. We will see it uh, graphically soon. And the supply is perfectly elastic, opposite to inelastic in this case. If it is infinity, that means it is uh, just horizontal it's parallel to y-axis now have a look uh, at these uh, figures and let's see uh, how things will go this is perfectly uh, elastic inelastic sorry why because it's infinity now we have it's just parallel to y axis now a change or an increase in the price will not actually have the, the, any change in the quantity so the price if the price goes high the quantity supplied will not change can you think of, about anything in our life that we have resembles this one think about it think about this one i asked you in the previous video about a possibility for demand instead of this this one there was supply uh, instead of supply there was demand price is same quantity was same also so think about it can we have any uh, realistic example about uh, or resembles this one okay let's go to the uh another b now think about this when it is extremely steep uh it has like a steep view of the supply curve then we have uh, a higher uh, increment in the price 
compared, of course, percentage change in the price, then uh, uh, not increment, actually change, uh, I, I would say again, a higher change in the percentage, higher percentage change in the price than the percentage change in the quantity demanded. Now look, it's like here, wider than here, and this is exactly what we have as percentage, like maybe 10% here, and here 22, so it's more than twice, okay? This one, this is inelastic, so if you divide quantity, percentage change in quantity, or percentage change of quantity by the percentage change of price, we, we get something less than one, and that is inelastic. Now think about unit elastic. Unit elastic, the change, the percentage change is fixed. So the percentage change in quantity is exactly equal to the percentage change in price. And that what gets you uh, unit elasticity. Can you think about anything in our life that has something close to unit elasticity? Think about it. Okay. Uh, when we have the elasticity greater than one, that is elastic, and we said that we have a smaller change in price or change of price, percentage change of price, compared to the supplied quantity. So in this case, we have a wider, uh, you can say, area here than here, and that's, that, that's due to the uh, higher change of quantity compared to the uh, change in the price. Change here, we, we are not specifically saying rise or fall, just change, change is enough, because it doesn't matter, negative or positive, it doesn't matter, we are speaking about elasticity in general, okay? The last one is uh, perfectly elastic. Perfectly elastic, that means uh, the price is actually uh, fixed, but any change in the price will cause this. So the quantity, let's say at the price of uh, $4, the quantity supplied is infinity. There is no limit for the quantity supplied. Now let's say, uh, uh, I'm sorry, higher than four, I'm sorry, at exactly $4, the producers will supply any quantity, whatever the quantity that you want. Higher than four, it will be like infinity the quantity supplied. Less than four, it will be tending to go to zero minimum, okay? This is what we call perfectly elastic. So anything at four, uh, any amount you want will supply or the suppliers will supply. Over that one, it will be infinity. infinity. Less than that one, it will be zero. Can you think about any product resembles this one? Not 100%, but resembles it, that means getting closer to this kind of uh, scenario and this one, think about it also. Think about the perfectly inelastic. Think about these. I may ask those, these questions on the exam, okay? I usually tell you guys, like, think about them. Uh, I may ask them in either uh, quiz or uh, maybe in, a, in your assignment, so please think about them. All right, what kind of applications do we have uh, relative to the elasticity. Now let's just ask some of these questions, which I, I will not answer here. I will answer other questions later, later on in a few slides. Why some people pay more than others for the same flight on a plane? Think about it. Think about their demand for having that air ticket. Why restaurants give senior discount? Think about it, what's the reason? why some businesses give out coupons to customers. Do you think of any reason other than promotion? Think about it. Why some gas stations charge higher prices than others? I think about it. Uh, why no two students pay the same amount for the same degree? Now, do not think only about the tuition fee. Uh, not only tuition fee, maybe also clothing, uh, food, uh, maybe accommodation, whatever. So you may think about all costs to whoever uh, are studying as students, if they, they pay the same or not, for, for sure, most likely they don't pay the same. So who pays higher price? So among all these questions like this one, for example, who pays higher price about this one, who pays higher price? 
and what's the reason? Think about it. I'll not answer these questions, but they will open actually your view about what we are speaking uh, relative to the uh, elasticity. I will speak about uh, two other examples. Uh, I'll delay this one a little bit, the OPEC one. We have its slide later on. So delay it. Let's just discuss another more clear example. Uh, for some reason, let's say um, farmers got to know that there is a new technology or based on new technology in agriculture, let's say, research. Um, scientists developed a new wheat, uh, a hybrid wheat that produces more. So the, the outcome or the, the production of wheat would be increased by 20%. Well, is this a good news to them or a bad news? How can we judge? So what about this discovery? Is it good to them? Will they benefit from it? Will such an increment in the productivity of their wheat will be good to them or bad? Let's analyze it. If you remember from, from last chapter when we spoke about demand and supply and the uh, equilibrium, we said that we have three steps to analyze the supply and demand curves. And we said, first, we need to see the increment in uh, or that increment or decrement or whatever. What would happen if we have a change? What would happen to the supply or the demand? Now we speak about supply. Why? Because we speak about farmers supplying wheat. Uh, we don't speak about the demand, actually. The demand of wheat most likely will not change now. Why? I'll speak about it in a while. OK, just hold your patience. So we speak about supply. So more supply, well, because of more supply, that means the supply curve will shift to the right. Okay, that's what we know. Increase in the amount supplied, that means um, there will be more quantity supplied at every price or at any price. Okay, that will shift the curve to the right. Let me show you. Now look, let's say S1 was the initial supply uh, curve. Now S2 will be the uh, final supply curve after 20% of the increment in the uh, production of wheat. Now what will happen? Now let's speak about the demand. Uh, well, because of this kind of technology or whatever research, usually taste, the taste of people wouldn't change. That means the way we consume wheat won't change. Either, either bread or bakery or similar things won't change even if the uh, new product of wheat is somehow tastier or nicer it wouldn't make people to consume much more no that's not going to be the case so demand more or less will be the same it won't change if the demand is the same then what happens we have more quantity supplied so what will happen we will have an a decrement in the price a fall in the price. Now look at this. So this one is increment shifted to the right. Now look at this. We have the same demand curve. Initially it was somewhere here, let's say. Okay, let's say uh, it was the quantity demanded, let's say 100. Okay. At, at that price, 3. Now the demand won't change. But what will happen? Because we have more quantity supplied, this one will shift to the right. So what will happen? We will have a little bit increment in the demand due to the new intersection here, because we said the equilibrium will uh, modify itself or will actually adapt itself to the new uh, policy of supply and demand. Demand won't change, supply will change, but still we have new intersection. The price will fall for sure. It's a competitive market, more supplied quantity, lower price. So this is uh, usually the case if we, the demand didn't change. So this is what we think. Now look, the intersection, the price will drop to two. This is just an assumption, okay? And due to that, what will happen? Let's calculate the total revenue. Remember from the previous chapter, or sorry, from the previous session, we spoke about the total revenue. It's like a rectangle. Like, look this one. This is the rectangle of the revenue. The... Uh, Quantity multiplied by the price, so 3 times 100, that's 300. Let's look at the other rectangle here. 2 times 110, that is 220. Which one is higher? So drop from 300 to 200, 
uh, 20. Well, the first one is higher. So more productivity, lower total revenue. So is it good or bad for farmers? It is not good. <laughs> for farmers, it's, it's actually bad news. Although their productivity is increased, but because it's a competitive market, so all of them will produce more. And due to that, what will happen? Since the demand didn't change, there is a higher quantity supplied, the price will definitely fall. And this is usually, a, you can say, a scenario that we have in worldwide, available in many uh, products that we uh, consume in our world. Okay. So I may ask similar questions in quizzes or exams. So we spoke about the revenue. This is the explanation I just uh, showed you on the graph. Okay. Now think about OPEC. I said I will speak about it in, in a while. Now let me go back to this OPEC example. OPEC is exactly the organization uh, concern of petrol production. Few countries, not few actually, a number of countries uh, came together to create this organization. They control the prices of oil distribution or petrol distribution all, all over the world. So um, actually there was a scenario in 19, between 1973 and 1974 where they increased the prices of petrol by 50%. Also in, in another uh, period, 79 and 90, uh, 81. What happened? So now when we when there is a sudden increment in the price of petrol and that increment is too much it's like 50 percent is not little okay it's not like an increment of a few dollars per barrel or no no this is 50 percent that's too much in the short run that means in the short period of time because the uh supply and demand of petrol are actually inelastic we cannot give up the uh, demand of petrol or petrol products. Due to that, what happened? The decrease in supply, actually, um, the decrease in both supply and uh, demand were not that much elastic, were inelastic. Why? Well, you may uh, reduce the supply, decrease the supply, but what will happen? Increment in the price, because there is a demand so you lower the uh, supply still the demand is there it didn't change because people can all give up petrol at the beginning short run so similar to this now look let me show you the curves now look at this initially now look at this the supply changed the demand is still same in the short run so since the supply is shifted to the uh, left because the decrement of the supply an increase in the price Okay, so the price jumps, but what will happen? This one will be a bit more uh, flattened over time. Now look, a bit more flattened over time. So the price over time will be more adapted. We explained about this before. We said that over sh uh, short run, people cannot uh, replace their, uh, you can say, demand of certain products, especially if their life is dependent on it. But after some time, they adapt their life by looking for uh, re replacements. So what happened? Maybe people here uh, find their different maybe uh, supply or maybe change their technology of productions, lower their use of petrol or their uh, dependence, uh, sorry, dependent on petrol. So this is the idea. Over short run, what happens usually is uh, an extreme increment in the price because it is in the short run it's inelastic but over the long run it, it turns out to be more elastic than the short run and people get adapted they change their uh, behavior towards uh, spending or sorry consuming such um, a product that that is incremented incremented in price okay this is actually the end of this session I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it and i hope you will learn uh, from it until the next our uh, next session have a good time goodbye